Hey guys, welcome to episode one of our Zenith radio that we're restoring for Lisa G. Just a couple of notes on this radio. Um, this is actually a Model 8 S is in Sam 563X, and it's got a chassis of A, A is in Apple, 02. And the reason why we know that is because this particular model had a 15 inch speaker, and this console radio does have a 15 inch speaker. So we know that this is the right model. Um, when it was made new, it sold for about $80, and if you convert that to, to today's money, it's about $1,480. So, um, you know, probably for that age, 1941, probably a mid-range radio, not the most expensive, but certainly something expensive, 1941. So, um, that's where we are. So, where are we? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to place the filter caps, right? And if you look at the schematic here, we're going to show you where the filter caps are. So we're going to put this here and we're going to zoom in on it. And I'm going to show you on the schematic where they are. So you'll see C18, C19, and C17. This particular radio has three filter caps in it. A 15, it's actually a 16 microfarad, a 16 microfarad, and a 5. We're going to be replacing them with modern components, and they don't make 5s and 15s anymore that you can easily get. So we're going to be replacing them with 16, 16, and 4. That'll be just fine. I did check the rectifier tube, and I checked all the, uh, you know, the, the capacitance allowances on the tubes, and that will work just fine. So, the way that this thing works, if we go up here a little bit, you'll see the transformer right here. And there's a center tap coming off the transformer. All the negative leads of the filter caps go to the center tap of that transformer. Now, a lot of radios I've worked on, actually most of them, the filter caps actually go to chassis ground, not on this radio. So on this radio, they go to the center tap. So the way we're going to achieve this, first of all, the uh, wiring under here is pretty bad. I found a lot of broken wire. But let's zero in a little bit on this filter cap right here. And let me get something to point so I can show you. I want to make sure I got that in focus. Alright, so if we look at our filter cap, there's actually three wires coming off. There's a yellow one and there's two red ones. And you can't see it because this coil's in the way. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to cut the wires on that filter cap and leave it. We're not going to take it out. We're going to leave it there because it'll look natural from the top. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to mount terminal strips like we have right here inside the chassis you see I've got them mounted already Let me pull this down just a little bit and you'll see I've got terminal strips mounted there and I've already mounted the two 16's here's one here's the other if we look over here on the end of this one you'll see I have a yellow wire Let's pull this back a little bit so you can see it so this yellow wire is connected to this filter cap. That yellow wire will end up going to our rectifier tube, which is right down here, and it goes to uh, pin 8 of the rectifier tube. Simple, home run. Our second 15 microfarad cap comes over here to this tube, which is, I'm still getting familiar with this thing, so pardon me. And that tube is a 6P5G. So we have a red wire home running off of that capacitor. And that's actually going to replace this one right here, which is a little bit crusty, as you can see. So that's going to replace that. And then our last wire, which will go for a 5 or 4 microfarad cap, is really just a short little home run that goes to a terminal strip down here. Let's see if we could show you that. There's a terminal strip mounted here, and there's another red wire that comes right here. So, relatively simple. So the first thing we're going to do is get all that wired in, and then we're going to be able to do a, an initial power run test after I do another thorough inspection. I do see a lot of crusted wire um, that's broken that I'm going to need to replace, but you know the trick with this old wire is if you don't mess with it, it won't break. So um, we're going to attempt not to do that. From an aesthetics perspective, to mount that terminal strip, 
you'll see right here. See those two screws? That's where I mounted them. I'm going to put some light on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint those two screws gold when we're done. So you don't notice it. Okay? So that's how we're mounting the filter caps. It should be barely noticeable. One other thing on this uh, radio which I didn't tell you is that it's actually going to have Bluetooth capability as well. So it's going to sit in the console and it's going to be sitting in the recording studio in Lisa's home. So we want to make sure we've got uh, Bluetooth capability so that they can play modern music through it. That 15 inch speaker, I'm really dying to hear it. I'm sure it's going to sound really, really good. So our order of business here is let's get all of these filter caps connected. Let's do a thorough check and then we'll do an initial power up. And what we'll do is we'll leave the rectifier tube out of the radio when we power it up. And just, um, you know, make sure that our 6 volt winding is looking good, our, our uh, dial bulbs, and we'll do some checks. And then we'll do an initial power up and see how everything's going. Typically with these radios, the controls that come out that go to either side of the chassis, the wires are bad. I haven't even looked at it yet. I'm going to end up replacing all those wires though. I already know that. Um, and uh, that's going to just be something I have to do. And that's okay. That's why we do these things, so that we can restore them. Anyway, that's where we are. Let me get the filter caps replaced and then we'll come back and give you an update. Okay, before we go any further, I was really worried about this uh, this radio only because that front panel, the dial, is really long on this thing, and I really wasn't comfortable with this thing um, laying on its uh, on its top like that. I didn't want to do damage it or dent it. So uh, with my new wood shop skills, I built this thing, this this stand. So these two um, pieces came from a guitar amp stand that I have. So all I really needed to do was build the bottom, <clears throat> so I did, out of scrap wood. This is actually some of the scrap wood from the Radio Craftsman amp that I'm, that I'm working on. So I built that platform, and I, I bought some of these, uh, these thumb screws here, quarter inch thumb screws. And this thing is adjustable. You can see here on the sides, I think, that this can swing up and down. And uh, now I can work on this thing, and I don't have to worry about this front part getting damaged. So it's really, really solid. So uh, as we we're uh, progressing here, let me show you something a little close up. As we're progressing, we're running into a lot of bad wire. So uh, I'm still working on the capacitors, the filter capacitors right here. I have one more to do. And you'll notice a lot of new wire here. So I've had to replace runs of wire simply because it's just crumbling. You know, the, the thing with these radios, with this wire, is that if you touch it, it starts to deteriorate. So the key is try not to touch it. There's things you can do. For example, you can put crazy glue on it before you mess with it and it'll harden and not come off. But there's just some that's really far gone. So I'm going to replace whatever I can. you got to remember this has been in Lisa's family for a long time so we want to make sure it lasts. So um, we're about to, re to begin the uh, recapping process. I've held off on that until I got the stand ready. And um, that's what we're going to do now. So let's, uh, let's recap and when we see this again this is all going to be redone. Okay, I know, uh, I know Lisa's probably going to see at least one of these capacitors being replaced because I know she wants to learn a little bit from this. So, we're going to replace this capacitor. Some of you have seen this a million times, so feel free to fast forward. So, if you look at the capacitor on here, it says a .004. Okay? And that means that it's uh, basically a .004 capacitor, which has a code 402. And I've, let me move this light, gone in my stock and I have a 402 right there. So what we like to do on this, we don't like to disturb all the wiring and the solder connections because they're old. So what we're going to do is we're going to snip this off right at the base of the old capacitor. Right there. And we're going to leave the wire that it was attached to. Okay. Let me zoom in so you can get a close look at this. Okay. So if we look at this wire we now have something that we can solder the new capacitor onto. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure it's straight. There's one here. Now we've got a big mess going here, but I'm not going to disturb that. I'm going to do each one of these individually. So we'll start here. So we're going to put one end of the capacitor here and one end here. We're going to make sure they're straight. Then we're going to take some 
90% alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. We're just going to clean these things off, make sure there's no residue on them, make sure the solder is going to stick really good. Then we're going to take our capacitor right here. And we're going to just dry fit it. So we know that the body of the capacitor is going to fit right in between, so I can have the leads pretty close. Now what we're going to do on this is we're going to use the pigtail method for this. Let me pull the shot up a little bit. So we're going to take this capacitor, wrap it around this little screwdriver, like this, and we're going to wrap this around, like so. Okay. Then we're going to take a pliers, we're going to squeeze this together so we get a nice coil. Right there. And if you take this off, you can see the coil. Do the same thing on this end. And we're going to leave a little bit extra, just in case, so we have some play. I do this I like the lettering to point up so that the next person that's in here can see what value it is so I always try to be a little bit thoughtful about that so we're going to repoint these leads in the right direction something like that and the first thing we're going to do is slip it over this first one this first wire let me zoom in so you can see so we're going to slip this over the first wire and then what I like to do is just put a little bit of a hook on the end of this so it doesn't slip off. Like that. Okay. We're going to take our soldering iron. The iron goes on the piece. that cool for a second. Okay, we're going to test our piece. It's solid. So now we're going to turn this around like this. I'm going to slip this right over the end here. And this side I'm not going to put a hook on it because I don't have a lot of room. So let's solder this side down. Now the good thing about doing it like this is I can take these pieces off if I ever had to. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's tug on it. It's solid. Very solid. There's no wires touching anything. So that piece has now been replaced. Alright, we'll turn the camera off and we're going to focus on these two now. Okay, I think we're going to end this episode here because I have to really take my time in here um, with these other capacitors that are left over. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. I've got to be really careful in here because there's a lot of wire around it. I don't want to really damage the wire any more than I have to. So we're going to take our time. But what we've accomplished is you'll see we've replaced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight capacitors so far. And um, we've done those. Those are a piece of cake. Plenty of room to work. And then I have to s finish connecting um, the electrolytic capacitors. And here's the problem. Let me see if we can zoom right in here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right there is the electrolytic capacitor. And you'll see, tied off of that capacitor, they have this capacitor. They have a resistor here and they have a resistor here and all that's got to come off because we're disconnecting it right we've replaced it with these capacitors here that I've got mounted on the side so I need to land a terminal strip somewhere in here so that I can um, you know maintain that connection somewhere in the radio here so I need to take a look at that a little bit deeper 
and then I can connect it and again I've got to watch the wires you see right here here's here's an example of one that's already bad see that you could see the wire popping through right there that red one so I'm gonna have to replace that for sure you know and that's that's just the uh, the game with the stuff you know when you when you're working on these older radios that's okay but we are going to take our time and um, we're going to do it the right way and make sure that when we get it back to, uh, to Lisa, it's, uh, it's completely done. The other part that I'm going to have to do is this bundle of wires that are coming up. They actually go to one of the tone controls. It's actually uh, this tone control right here, which I haven't unwrapped yet. But I could tell you right now those wires are all brittle. So we're going to end up having to replace them. So we, we have brown, yellow, and orange, and yellow and blue and we have all the wires we need to replace it so we're going to do that at a later date as well so that's going to be it for uh, for this episode um, we will continue the work that we need to do and get this back to Lisa as soon as we can I am anxious to do a power-up but until I get the electrolytics sorted out I can't bring I can't bring it up online yet but we will we're not too far away all right everybody we'll see you in the next episode